Live from News Channel 8 in Tampa, Florida, this is Bucks Bonus on WFLA Now. Powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY. Your Tampa Bay Buccaneers atop the NFC South at 6-2 and two entering the bye week with the league's top passing offense and rowing along on defense as well. We're looking back and looking ahead as Brady and the Bucks have their sails set on SoFi, the site of Super Bowl 56. Hey there, everybody. J.B. Buno here with you live on WFLA Now on Bucks Bonus. Karen Loftus' camera is frozen. So what we're going to do is we're going to unfreeze that camera so that Karen is poof back with us here on Bucks Bonus. And there she is, Karen. Hello. Great Much to have you more here. flattering angle. I was like stuck with my eyes closed. I, I, I think it's Could have been worse to be frozen on, right? The Could Bucks are doing so well that they're breaking our systems here, apparently. <laughs> Six and two atop the NFC South. We're going to get into a lot here in this particular bi-week edition yep. of Bucks Bonus, powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY. Great to have Karen here on the program. And let's start with the passing offense. Leading the league in passing offense per game, the exact total is, uh, let's see here, 327 and a half yards per game passing, number one in the NFL. Karen, how is that, how is that getting done? How, how did this all come to be? Tom Brady. Oh, you want me to elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> um, Tom Brady. I mean, he's your quarterback. I mean, that's going to be your bread and butter when you have him and then all of your offensive weapons. I mean, they just know how to dissect defenses and they just, they're, they're a chunk play team. Like some of those big plays, that's, that's how they do it. You know, they can throw the long ball down to, to Evans or Godwin, Gronk when he gets back, AB when he gets back. Um, and then he's been throwing the ball to, to Leonard Fournette too. Some. Um, so I think that's just really been working for them. Um, and you stick with what works, right? Brady, 44 years old, and Bucks fans are thinking, we don't want this wild ride to end. 44 years old, and he is leading the NFL's yes. top passing offense. So let me just, we're going to talk defense here in a moment. We're going to look ahead to the remaining schedule in a moment here on Bucks Bonus. But, Karen, let me ask you when, here we are at the bye week. Tom Brady, 44 years old, doing it as good as anybody in the NFL. Really, you could argue he's right now leading, again, the best passing offense in the league. Bucks fans don't want just another half season of this or even one and a half seasons of this. They want this to continue. How long is this ride going to go on for, for Tom Brady? Man, very good question. I feel like that's the, the million-dollar question. I mean, pretty much the answer is as long as he wants it to. You know, he's still having fun. He's still healthy. He's still executing at a high level. So at what point, why would you stop? Um, so I, I feel like for him, uh, you know, as soon as he, you know, finds like it's a burden or more of work than fun, and if his body ever fails him, those would be the only two reasons. I don't think, and I, I really think he means it when he says that he doesn't really have a, a number set in his head. I don't think he's going to be like, okay, yes, one more season and that's it, or two more seasons. I think he's going to keep going as long as he's in a position to, to keep winning and doing it at a high level. And the Bucks have given him every reason to keep playing as far as surrounding him with good pieces and, and involving him in an organization um, that gives him the pieces to win. And that's what he was missing in New England. Uh, just the pieces around him that he wanted to, again, lead the NFL in, in passing yards is Tom Brady here at the center of your screen. Uh, number two total offense uh, in the league behind uh, the Dallas Cowboys at 455 uh, yards per game. Let's, let's talk uh, about the defense. Uh, defense is really going to be uh, we know we. I, I think at this stage in the game or the stage in the season with where we are, we we can expect that Tom Brady is going to lead a very potent offense. The defense has been plagued by injuries all season long, uh, especially in that secondary. How much does the bye week and getting healthy on the defensive side of the ball? This is a good time for this bye week to occur for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And what adjustments are necessary? on the defensive side of the ball, Karen. Yeah, it's a perfect time for this. I mean, they could have used the bye maybe the week before mm. even, but I mean, eight games in, I mean, you're talking about right in the middle of the season, they have nine games after this. So this is a really good spot for them to have a bye week in the season. If you remember last year, their bye week was very late. They limped into that bye week. Towards Rough schedule, that. yeah. It was very tough. Um, so it's going to be good to get these guys healthy. I mean, Sean Murphy bunting is, you know, back in the, the practice uh, 21 days window. Um, and to get some of those guys back in their secondary, I think, is one of the biggest things. You, that's the biggest thing for anybody in a bye week is get your guys healthy. Um, yes, they want to get Antonio Brown and Gronk back to, to full go. But then you think Richard Sherman and Carlton Davis and Sean Murphy bunting. 
I mean, they need those guys back. And, and the other guys that have been filling in for them have done a very good job. I mean, they only have two losses. Like, I know we're, you know, sort of a thinking about the, the recency bias, if you will, of them coming off the game to the Saints. But the, mm -hmm. the guys that have been stepping up in the secondary have been doing a really good job. Um, but that's not to say they wouldn't like their starters um, back and back to 100%. If Tom Brady is your, is your offensive MVP for the Bucks so far this season, midway through the season, and I, I think previously on Bucks Bonus, you highlighted Vita Vea as being potentially the defensive MVP. Give me a player on offense and a player on defense, one on each side of the ball, that you think you want to see more from in the second half of the season? Ooh, I like this question. Um, on the offensive side, I want to see more from Gronk. He has been out with injury. We know that. But I want to see him back healthy and back you know, catching touchdown passes from Tom Brady. I think their their offense can just be even more potent when he's back in the mix. So I want to see Gronk back healthy and, and producing like he, he did last season. And then defensively, I want to see more from Shaq Barrett, like the Shaq Barrett that showed up in that Thursday night football game against the Eagles. He was mm -hmm. all over the field, all uh, like chasing Jalen Hurts all over the field. And I want to see him get that opportunity to do that week in, week out. And actually, you know, get some sacks. I know he was a little bit upset at himself that he wasn't able to sort of finish those. You know, he's, he's running down these mobile quarterbacks, but I'd like to see him, um, you know, notch some more sacks on this season. Talking about the first eight games of the season here on Bucks Bonus, looking here at the schedule, the only two losses on the road yeah. at Los Angeles, at SoFi, the site of Super Bowl 56, and at the Superdome there in New Orleans, uh, losing to the Saints against, an, again, a South, an NFC South Division opponent. The Rams are a very, very good football yeah. team that just got better with Von Miller. That defense is oh, getting scarier yes. by the minute. <laughs> And then you have the loss uh, to the Saints. When you, when you think about those two losses, at Los Angeles, at New Orleans, most recently the one uh, at New Orleans, what stands out to you as some of the things that need to be corrected uh, to ensure that, um, that the Bucks, you know, uh, have smooth sailing for the remainder of the regular season? I think crowd noise was a big thing. Um, ah, SoFi yep. was very loud. And you know the Superdome is loud. That's, I, I talked to some of my friends who, you know, with the, the New Orleans media, and, you know, it's been a very long time since the Superdome was at full capacity. Um, so it was very loud in both of those situations. And that impacts a team. You talk about penalties, pre-snap penalties, just a lot of trouble communicating. Um, and those are amplified against good teams. So not only are they playing on the road in um, hostile environments, loud crowd noises, but those two teams were also very good teams with very good defenses. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily anything that the Bucks did wrong, except for penalties <laughs> um, and turnovers. So you, you, you shore up those things, the penalties and the turnovers, against very good teams. Um, and they should be okay, but I don't think it's any reason to, to panic. It's not like they lost to, you know, bum teams with losing records. The Rams and the Saints are very good teams. Bruce Arians not wanting to see as much yellow on the field, and if he does, it's for the opposing yeah. team. Okay, let's look, let's look ahead. Because okay. uh, the, the Buccaneers undefeated this season at Raymond James Stadium. Uh, they return on the 14th after the bye. They are at the Washington football team, then at home for the Giants. Uh, at the Colts, Falcons, then the Bills, Saints, Panthers, Jets, and then Panthers again to end out the the regular season. What are you looking forward to with – in fact, why don't we do this? Let's start with Washington. Yeah. Can't sleep on Washington. Bucks know that from, of course, their, their matchup with them last season. Washington football team, a sneaky good football team, can win any game that they go out there under uh, head coach Ron Rivera. Yeah. Uh, when, they go, when they travel to Washington, what are you going to be looking for uh, their uh, Bucks, Bucks against Washington football team? I think, I mean, they they need to prove that they can win on the road. I mean, you're going to have to do it going forward. You're going to have to be able to win games away from Raymond James Stadium. So I'm going to see how they respond, see as far as, like, discipline goes and see if they can clean up those penalties, have to win the turnover battle, and then see who they have on the roster who's healthy. So I think that's the biggest thing is, like, what pieces do they get back for this last stretch of the season, this last half of the season? Coming, so, those, go ahead. Those, yeah, I was going to say, those, those just getting healthy is so important. Yeah. Is it, it not? really is. I mean, it's, it's really what it's, what it's come down to. Who, uh, right now, injured, who's that one player that if you could bring, if you're Bruce Arians and you could play that game, you could bring, just put one player that is currently injured at perfect health 
Who's that one person? Sean Murphy Bunting, mm, for yep. sure. I mean, he's just invaluable. I mean, he flies around the field. He's so smart. And just his growth with this team and this system is, has been incredible. And he, he's proved how invaluable he is. In the postseason last year, he had a pick in every single one of their playoff games. Yeah. Like, he came on late because last year he was injured too. He was playing, but he was battling through an injury all season. And he was finally healthy when the postseason came. So he is just a very invaluable player. I don't know if you can say very invaluable. He's an invaluable player. Um, so I really hope that he comes back and can contribute to this team. And the latest prognosis on SMB is, is what exactly? When are they hoping to have him back? I think they're looking to have him back um, after the bye here in Washington because wow. it's like the 21 days to like start that practice um, ramp up, if you will. If Terry McLaurin is healthy, that's one of the better receivers in the league, it would be nice to have SMB back uh, in the secondary yeah. for uh, for Washington. After that, it's the Giants at home Monday on night Monday football. night football. Yes. That should be uh, Brady against the Giants. So much history there, obviously. Um, how big of a night is that going to be for Tampa and for Raymond James Stadium and the crowd here to see Brady against the New York football Giants? I mean, anytime you're in prime time, it's a big deal. Um, and the Bucs struggled with that a little bit last year, but it's a new season. We'll see how they can do. And also, you know, adding to the allure of that game is that they haven't had a home game in a while. It's going to be a very long stretch between home games. Their last one before that was at the Miami game. Um, I'm pretty sure it was because Miami, then they were at Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And then, at, and then uh, at home versus Chicago. Okay, yeah. Chicago was the game. Um, but I think it might be a month between home games. Is that right? Uh, you have a calendar in front yeah, of you. looking looking at the calendar here. So the twenty second is the Monday. Right. So yeah, no, it's a roughly a month. Yeah. So you know the, these fans really want to see their team um, on a Monday night game in prime time. Um, so I think that's going to be something to look forward to. As also, also, it's their only home game in November. Just one to circle uh, on the on the calendar. Thanksgiving if you're, week, it, people are going to be you know home for for Turkey Day. If you okay, so we'll end out on this because I'm okay. very much looking forward to. Yes, Turkey Day. Looking forward to Washington against the Bucks, and then of course Monday Night Football. Yes, with the with the Giants uh, coming into town, coming into Tampa. Nine games remaining on the schedule. Yep. Bruce Arians would never answer this question if you or Dan or anyone here at WFLA posed this question to BA. But what's the target number of wins with the mm. final? Realistically, of course, you want to win all nine. But if you're Bruce Arians, what are you, what are you really hoping to get out of the final nine games of the season and secure the NFC South on your way to hopefully a non wild card playoff position? I would say eight and one. You want wow? You think yeah. eight and one is case okay, because that the probably the toughest opponent remaining Saints is, is probably the Saints. Yeah, right. Again, again. I mean, they're always oh, just such a tough matchup. Just I mean, coming we, from the other side, having covered them, I know that... You were talking about how the schedule last year was, was had its challenges, right? When, when you look at this schedule, Washington, tough, tough football team. And yes, they are the football team. They are tough, but beatable. Giants, uh, clearly, Giants and the Jets are on this schedule. Um, just not, a, not, not a, very much of a threat. Colts are good, and you have, to go to, you have to go to Indy, and you have to beat the Colts, but also a winnable game, as is Atlanta... Buffalo, though, Buffalo's the other one on the schedule where you're thinking yeah. that's also another potential challenge. The, the Bills would be the other ones that I would circle as, like, the, the toughest ones. I would say the Saints and the Bills are their toughest opponents um, for the rest of this but season. But I like, I like your optimism, Karen. Eight and wait, let, let's, Listen, let's go eight and one to finish what? out the season. I'd say nine and oh, but, I'm, you know, perfect is, is, is tough. You know, if they, if they go nine and oh, then we can re-rack this tape and say that I was wrong. But If it's eight and one... It's going to be weird at the end of the regular season to look at a 14 and 3. Yes, because of the 17 games. 17 yeah. game schedule. It's going to be weird to see the 14 and 3. You're going to think, oh, what is. No, yeah. but that's the reality we're in now a 17 game sure. regular season for the NFL. Karen Loftus on Bucks Bonus, powered by 1 800 Ask Gary. What are you really looking, honing in on for the remaining nine games on the schedule? Oh, um. I would just to say how this team can be at their best. You know, I, I know we've said this multiple times in this stream about the, getting healthy, but you talk about how good this team has been playing with so many pieces missing along the way and how many times they've said, oh, we've left points out on the board or, you know, they're scoring 45 points and they still say there's more to be done out there. So if they can keep building 
bring back some of their offensive weapons, bring back some of the guys in the secondary and really just be the complete team um, that they were to start the season. Um, I think that's what I'm looking forward to the most is like realizing the potential. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a bold prediction. Go ahead. You ready for the it? The floor is yours. I think that right, on, right to your point, Okay. I think that there's going to be one game, and I don't know, I can't, I'm not confident okay. enough in this to pick one on the schedule, okay. but there's going to be one game that is going to be an offensive explosion unlike anything that we have ever, I'm oh, talking like talk a, about, like 60? I'm talking 55, 60 points. I, oh I, I think, I think that. Goodness, who do you think they're going to drop 60 on? I don't know. Who do they drop 60 on? I, I think that, <laughs> man, I'm looking at this schedule. Uh, uh, it would be, it would be really nice to do it to the Saints. Probably not going to happen to the Saints. No way. Maybe Carolina. Or maybe the Jets. Wouldn't it be very apropos for Tom Brady to go into MetLife, Gosh. take on a very challenged New York Jets team? Justin Shecker at WFLA is looking at me like I'm crazy. Go in there and drop 55 Thanks, on his old AFC East rival? I don't know. I think okay. that one game this year is going to be just boom, a, a big offensive okay. explosion. I'm holding for the you Bucks. to 60. I'm not letting you fold at 55. Ooh. If you said offensive explosion is 60, that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. Let's, but Okay. We'll see what I happens. I say eight and one down the stretch, and you say one of those games is going to involve 60. I think so. I like it. Karen Loftus, everybody, you'll catch her on WFLA News Channel 8, and, of course, here on Bucks Bonus. Fridays here on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. Thanks so much for joining us here on Bucks Bonus, powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY. We'll see you next time, folks, after the bye.